My mom and dad divorced when we were seven. That was quite traumatic for a seven-year-old. Divorce does uh, just horrific things to young children. My mom went on with her life and my dad went on with his. He was a very encouraging dad, a very supportive dad all the way up until his death. You know, I had spent 18 years in uh, the fitness industry. I owned a gym, I was doing what I loved to do. Um, I was personal training, had my own business. In my, in my late 20s, and I, I began to uh, have a desire to basically know um, who I was in, 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 in the afterlife. And then I had a, a gentleman come in who I was actually, he was one of my clients, and he came in and, and began to explain what you need is a Bible-believing church. Um, they ended up taking me to their church. I said the sinner's prayer. And that's, you know, that's what was introduced to me as a means to come, come to faith. You know, it, it all seemed but a trivial thing. These things that we do, these mistakes that we make, um, seemed trivial. They didn't, they didn't seem big and great. They just seemed like, hey, we're all sinners. You know, we've all sinned against God and Christ is, is, is died for sinners. And that was pretty much the gospel that I got. Uh, my life was a wreck behind the scenes. I was living a dual life. I was trying to pretend to be a, a good Christian outwardly, but behind the scenes, I was just, you know, up to my neck in sin. Uh, but it wasn't until six years later, a lady came in and she was one of my clients and she handed me a book. The author of the book really began to talk about um, the commandments of God and the character of God and His justice and His holiness and the wrath of God and all these things that were um, pretty much neglected in American Christianity, things that just weren't talked about. You shall have no other God before me. Uh, you shall not create any 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 idols, you know, and, and you shall not blaspheme his holy name. Uh, you shall keep the Sabbath day holy. You shall honor your mom and dad. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not lie. You shall not be greedy and covetous. And the exceeding righteousness of Christ in, in his law is when really I had that Isaiah 6 moment where I really became undone, unraveled, and um, turned into dust and powder. Just blew me up, blew me up. And um, from that point on, my life began to change. That born again experience to read the Bible happened. My brother-in-law was killed in a motorcycle accident, and it really traumatized our whole family. It was just shattering. He was just here one second, now he's gone into eternity. It was one of the things that God had used to wake me up to the reality that men are dying and men are perishing. I remember the day that I was going to preach the first time in the open air. I remember all the thoughts that were going through my mind and probably through my wife's mind. Like, I'm the last guy in the world that would should be up on anything preaching to anybody. You know, if anybody should probably just stay home, it probably should have been me. Uh, I had zero rights to tell anybody anything with the life that I had been living prior. We know that God is sovereign, um, but that doesn't give us the 
um, excuse to not preach the gospel to lost people. And I believe that burden hit me uh, like a cannonball. The only hope for mankind, the only hope for humanity is the gospel of Jesus Christ. There, there is no other, there is no other hope, there is no other remedy, um, there, there's nothing uh, that, um, that can take a man and, and make a man fit and ready uh, for heaven outside of Jesus Christ.